Hello everyone and welcome to a video about the logic behind the three space plane designs I have made so far. Probably I will make others because none of them are entirely satisfactory. I'm never satisfied with any sort of rocket or space system. Every one of them has some sort of shortcoming, uh, but they all are built to some specifications. There is some logic behind them, some reason they look the way they do. And so I'm going to talk about why the space plane designs that I've made look the way they do because they are all fairly tightly made to a particular logic. And that's what makes them different from designs from other things. So even though something might look like a design that you've seen elsewhere, because the logic behind it is different, it's a different design. And so there is a space plane design where they had three different identical space planes. Two were the carrier plane and the center one was the one that actually went to space. It was a Trimies design. And that bears some resemblance to this idea, but of course there are two here. The reason why there were three in that particular design was because they were using hydrogen and oxygen and that's not very dense. And I realized that it would be possible with just two planes to do the same job as long as you're using methane and oxygen. So that was criteria number one for this Shinkansen system, my first space plane idea. And the second criteria was I wanted it to be able to refuel with a single launch of either Starship or SLS such that it would be able to go to the moon, make orbit around the moon and come back. Uh, so the total delta V would be 4,800 assuming it would uh, air break at uh, Earth orbit, air break in Earth's atmosphere in order to get to low Earth orbit. So we needed wings because it's going to use them to help air brake, but I mean, not full wings. So we have this sort of uh, design where it's got a lot of surface area. It's going to be fairly light coming back because its tanks are empty. And the reason for the look of it is A, I wanted to make sure to have some good surface area. B, it's basically wrapped around the tanks. Um, in fact, I made the tanks as separate parts to ensure the balance. If you can see here, uh, there are tanks here, and uh, I made them a physical part that gets clipped in, and the entire airframe is wrapped around the tank. So the space plane has its tanks in the back here, but the carrier plane, which is on this side, it has uh, less pleasant texture just to distinguish. It was actually the old texture for this uh, space plane. Both of them had this old texture first before I updated it on this side. But on this side, we have a cargo bay, and of course, uh, crew area up front. But the shape of the Shinkansen is based on the fact that the carrier plane has to carry more fuel, and it actually cross feeds that fuel into the space plane during the first phase until the carrier plane is out, and then the space plane heads on to orbit, and then in orbit gets refueled so it can do its moon mission. Uh, basically, all of my space plane ideas involve doing a moon mission with these space planes because the goal is that they're going to use their wings to aero break down to a lower orbit. So that is, maybe that's criteria zero, right? Right from the start, where all of them are for moon missions. So the body of the carrier plane has this, uh, so it has the two tanks in the back here. They're actually common bulkhead tanks. So they're both, they ha both have uh, methane and oxygen and a bulkhead between. But it also has this carrier tank. Which maybe... Nope, I've made a mess of things by taking off the space plane. Oh, actually, uh, you can sort of see it makes it transparent over here. That's actually pretty helpful. So we've got the two tanks in the back there and then the carrier tank in the front so that the carrier plane is just full of fuel. It's entirely full of fuel and then cross feeds the fuel in and that's what allows the system to work. So the length of the Shinkansen is entirely based on fitting all those tanks into the carrier plane. And of course, having some sort of aerodynamic nose uh, that uh, actually has the RCS tanks. It reserves RCS fuel in its nose tanks. It does have nose tanks, um, forward RCS tanks. Uh, in this case, it's a little bit underfueled, uh, but that's so that it can slightly maneuver back into the atmosphere and land safely. Now, I designed the system so tightly that it turned out that even though it would work to get the space plane into orbit, it could carry no cargo. And so I have these 
reusable boosters. And the boosters are here designed with inflatable floats. They have parachutes. And also, it's using the same engine as everything else. This is the E4 engine. And we have a shroud here that closes around it so that it will protect the engine on splashdown. So, recoverable boosters indeed. So that is the idea there. The engines are all the same. So the boosters have the ED4 engine, which is a 1000 kilonewton engine and burning methane and oxygen. And these are all the same, all five of them. And they are the same as this one, except this one has an extendable nozzle. So you see it's the same thing, except this has a very big extendable nozzle to get a better vacuum ISP. And then there are OMS engines on the space plane version because these have limited ignitions and also might be too much thrust. The back end of the two are a little bit different because I updated the back end here, uh, smoothed it out and added more protection for the engines so that these um, surface wing surfaces uh, extended to the end of the nozzle when it's retracted. So one of the reasons I didn't like the Trimese design with three uh, planes was that I didn't think that it gave enough room for vertical stabilizers. And so we do have larger vertical stabilizers here. And you can see we wouldn't be able to stack three of these planes together because, I mean, as if you could manage enough yaw control off of these surfaces on the edge here, that'd be great. Uh, but I didn't think that at least the Ferrum Aerospace uh, mod that we have for managing aerodynamics would let me do that. So anyway, those are the criteria for how the Shinkansen was designed. It was designed to be refueled by something in particular. It was designed with a particular mission in mind. And uh, I calculated the masses in a video back when I designed it. So somewhere on my channel, there is a video where I explain entirely how I came up with the numbers. But it's a fairly small system. I mean, you can see the total mass combined of all this is still less than the mass of a Falcon 9 at launch, which is impressive. Uh, Size-wise, you can see the shuttle cockpit is fairly big compared to Shinkansen. And so that's one of its benefits. Um, it is fairly lightweight as far as things are concerned, but it really doesn't have much payload capacity. And again, the existence of the payload bay is mainly because of the need to fit fuel on this side. So, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, just by chance that we have a payload bay anyway, and we can't carry much more of a crew module because crew modules are heavy. So if you think, oh, well, why don't you just use this all as crew room? Well, that would be a lot more mass because that has to be uh, built to a certain spec. So, having a cargo bay was easier. So uh, also as a mass, uh, well, size reference, perhaps, we can compare the Dragon 2 spacecraft. So even though the shuttle looks uh, huge compared to this, you can see it compares more favorably to the Dragon 2 and uh, actually has much more uh, crew capacity. So it's all right uh, as far as crew cabins are concerned. All right, but let's see how it launches. This is certainly one of the most precarious sort of systems I've ever come up with as far as launch is concerned, and I don't think I can launch it by hand. It has always been, and uh, let me just make sure I load it in here, uh, it has always been controlled by KOS because it is very hard to control by hand. So we start off with the launch script. The engines on the carrier plane have to be shut off at very particular times because the balance of the whole thing changes. And it's got a little bit of a sideways tendency initially. That's partly because of the boosters. It's got a little bit extra thrust on this side right now. But yeah, this side gets depleted, but this side is reserving all of its fuel until the carrier plane leaves. So the carrier plane has to shut off engines as we go along. 
So right now the nozzles are retracted so that it gets its surface ISP and then it'll extend the nozzles to get back better vacuum ISP at the right time. That was an idea for one way to use the RS-25s on the shuttle. They, that they would have extendable nozzles to optimize for both sea level and vacuum. But then they developed the shuttle's special nozzles that manage the whole thing. Here the script is limiting our thrust in order to make sure that we don't have too much dynamic pressure. After all, there's a lot of surface going on here. This would be a more efficient system if I switched to Raptors, but we'd have to work the balance out right too. Off go the boosters. They get a little bit torched there. They don't really get very far out. But again, they're just there to ensure that this has some halo capacity at all. The nozzles are extended at this point. Of course, they would have to retract for re-entry. So the carrier plane has shut down two of its engines. There are aboard options all the way, but they're really, really hard to do. In fact, I did the shuttle return to launch site aboard partly so I could figure out how to do the abort with this. One thing that would have to happen is that the cross feed from the carrier plane into the space plane would have to stop because the space plane before it can abort has to drain most of its fuel because its fuel is all back here except for some RCS fuel up there. It needs to drain most of it otherwise its center of mass is too far back. It won't be aerodynamically stable. Okay, so now there's only one engine on the carrier plane left. I'll have to pay attention. It's supposed to stage off the carrier plane, but sometimes it doesn't do that properly. Like that. So, off it goes. The recovery of the carrier plane is uh, contingent on having a runway down this way, so probably we'd have to manage a launch site that is not Cape Canaveral unless we have a runway at, in the Bahamas or something. So you can see the internal fuel of this is enough to give it about 6,000 meters per second so technically it doesn't need to be completely topped off in order to do the moon mission. But the downside to this system and one reason why I decided to make an alternative was that it turned out it took too many passes to air break in low Earth orbit. Even though it's fairly light and has this huge surface area, it was it didn't have the heat tolerance, and we matched the heat tolerance of the shuttle. So, but we weren't going as deep into the atmosphere as the shuttle does on its full re-entry. We were just trying to skim the atmosphere in order to slow down, but not enough surface area to do that quickly enough to avoid too many passes in the radiation belts, so one thing I wanted to do was avoid that. One reason for creating a space plane is that we are effectively making sure that we return with and can reuse our transfer stage and service module, right? So instead of dumping those, which any capsule would have to, a capsule cannot bring its transfer stage back, a space plane can. and here, Starship is effectively a space plane as well. Uh, so, it allows for the service module and transfer stage to be brought back and reused. So all the space planes, um, except for the last one, which is the Taurus spacecraft. The Taurus spacecraft can reuse its uh, service module, but I decided to make one space plane that wouldn't be trying to reuse its transfer stage. Perhaps it's obvious, perhaps it's not, but the carrier plane is not ever meant to be crewed. Uh, it is completely automated. The space plane can be crewed, but the carrier plane is not meant to have crew at all and doesn't have any room for it. That does make it lighter and uh, the heat shielding should be lighter on the carrier plane as well. I have no idea why it's reading so much delta V there, but... <laughs> okay... 
the real delta V reading would be down here, and we have 482 left. We are in a high-ish orbit on the apoapsis side, 493 kilometers. So there it is. But yeah, even like this with the three boosters, it doesn't have a huge amount of margin for cargo. So some of the shortcomings of the Shinkansen system were that its aborts are really hard to do. Uh, it doesn't really aero capture that well in Earth's atmosphere in order to return. And it also had limited cargo capacity. But this doesn't really address that too much, ex unless you are not going to the moon. Um, in this case, this can carry much more cargo to lower Earth orbit if it is not trying to get to the moon. But the basic criteria for this is that it was going to be launched by some other launcher. In this case, we have New Glenn. One of the plus sides of New Glenn is it has these aerodynamic surfaces on it, which can counterbalance the space plane's wings, even if the wings are extended. But they can retract. I made them so that they could. And, but really, we would like control surfaces on the wings themselves, but due to a limitation of Kerbal Space Program and how these surfaces do not go along with the animated parts, I did not put them. Actually, they are, in order to control world, it has RCS thrusters on the wings. That was contemplated for the shuttle as well, but not done. The design is built around the idea that it's going to carry two hydrogen-oxygen tanks, and those would feed some hydrogen-oxygen engine on the tail. So it is designed around tank. Actually, all three designs are designed around their tanks. In this case, it is designed around the idea that it needs to contain enough hydrogen and oxygen to transfer to the moon. And we have here four BE-7 engines as our transfer engines. And the internal fuel of the Shuttle Mark II here is methane and oxygen, so we use ED-1s. And we would slightly want to underfuel the ED-1. Well, it depends. Uh, we're not really optimal here because we... I think I planned this for balloon tanks, and we're using regular aluminum lithium tanks. Uh, so we're only getting 2,700, but I don't know if it's calculating with the abort system or not. So once it gets far enough along that it doesn't need the abort system, which is these SRBs. These are real SRBs, by the way. They are based on the Lambda 4B uh, from Japan. And that Lambda 4B has a bunch of these on the bottom of it to give it a good start. They're very high thrust, low duration SRBs, which is perfect for a launch abort system. So they are real SRBs. And we have these decouplers, uh, which I can't click on, apparently. But these decouplers, abort decoupler left here, uh, will separate them off when they are no longer needed. So we don't have to be burdened by these SRBs for the whole time, nor the parachutes, unless we want to keep them along for some reason. So the parachutes are on the the abort system decouplers. Yep, so just parachute down in the case of an abort. The aerodynamics of this would be perhaps complicated. Maybe it could do with some sort of surface. I'm not sure. But uh, obviously in Kerbal Space Program, that part's easier. So it is built around the tanks. And then, of course, we have to have some sort of crew cabin. And then there is fuel in the back here for the OMS system, orbital maneuvering system. And all in all, you see the numbers there. It is about 50 tons. But uh, I would like to switch these out for better tank, well, balloon tanks, because we probably do not need tanks we've got there. Because after all, there's no structural load on them. And yeah, I think I designed it based on that, uh, taking a look at the Delta V there. Okay, I'll just manually launch this one because I can. Throttle up. No, let's switch you there. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. So this is the Shuttle Mark II. Originally it was called Shinkansen II. But then again, originally the Shinkansen was called Hamster. <laughs> Do 
Delta V-wise, our capabilities are less than Shinkansen, but the versatility and choice of launch vehicle helps. The Shinkansen space plane, I mean, if you launch it unfueled, it could be launched by something, but not very easily. You'd have to strap it on the side, not on the top. On the top, it would be very unwieldy. Fueled, uh, no launcher would be able to launch it because it's more than 130 tons. I was hoping that this would be a little bit better on the aero capture, but it turns out not so much. Perhaps if we had control surfaces on the wings that would help a little bit more. It does, of course, have a better abort capability. So that is a plus. I don't know how much fuel to reserve for a barge landing with this, but I think I'll cut it there. 15 seconds left. Separation and ignition. We have a little bit of a mystery how much Delta V we have here. With the two BE3Us, which may outperform the real ones. Uh, we've got 446 seconds of ISP, but it seems like they don't really get that much, perhaps. Right around here would be a good time to ditch the abort system, but if I recall, they don't go off wonderfully. Let's see. A little bit iffy there. Of course, there is the decoupler as well. That does add mass to it. The fins don't exactly fit inside a New Glenn fairing very well, obviously. It would poke out of the 7 meter fairing unless this was offset, which to some extent it could be. But uh, they would fit inside the fairing of SLS, uh, so then why would you need to put the transfer fuel if you're going to use SLS if it's uh, block 1B? Of course, the uh, EUS would be able to transfer this. Got any problems? Maybe if you wanted to carry cargo in there. Cruise space in this is most limited, though, compared to the other two space planes. So again, the specifications for this was that it has to be launchable by a regular launcher that was available and carry its own transfer fuel still. So it had to be fairly small and lightweight, as lightweight as possible. That did sort of limit the size of the wings as well, which turns out to be a bit of a problem for the aero capture because once again, this does not aero capture as well as I would like. So because we needed to keep the wings lightweight, I wasn't able to get the aero capture performance. Okay, we could probably get into orbit with the New Glenn upper stage, but we'll have it deorbit and complete with our our own engines. The BE7s are only uh, 40 kilonewtons here, and I've got them at 452.8 second ISP. Hopefully would be useful if they were like that. So there you have it. That is the Shell Mark II's idea. We have enough to transfer to the moon and we have about 1,300 meters per second to do something around moon capture, but it depends on what orbit. If we capture into a tight orbit, that's going to be tough, uh, unless we eject out the tanks and that will give us a little bit more delta V. Uh, but we are carrying the full load of food, water, and oxygen, I should note. But then breaking orbit would be tough unless we get refueled around the moon, which would be helpful uh, if we could grab some fuel around the moon because there's in situ resource utilization, then that's a little bit easier for this. As you see right now, its load is 51.6-ish tons, so perhaps New Glenn would not be able to launch it without some help from this completing orbit. So again, the margins are tight, and the error braking situation is not good with this. So that leads us to the Taurus space plane, which is the most recent one that I've designed. The Taurus space plane's idea was to reuse the shuttle's OMS system entirely. So it is built around, once again, built around tanks, and it is built around the shuttle's OMS tanks. We still have some pizza here. 
This is from a different idea. Uh, let's offload the pizza and the water tanks and the oxygen tanks and the solar panel for a sec. It was doing a delivery here. Uh, but I started off by modeling the shuttle's uh, helium tank. That's the one up front. Uh, it's MMH and Mon 3 tank or uh, nitrogen tetroxide tank. And so there's the tanks on one side and the opposite OMS system on the other side and the shuttle OMS engines, the AJ 10190s being used in the back here. And in fact, uh, shuttle's sort of structure curves around those to be as tight as possible. Uh, so yeah, it is built around the shuttle's OMS system to reuse it. And otherwise the front end looks a lot like the shuttle Mark II. But now we have a much bigger wing. So that was designed to hopefully help with aero capturing and I have not definitively uh, decided whether that has worked out for us or not. As far as a size is concerned, it obviously has roughly the same mass as the Shuttle Mark II. Uh, it's not got the hydrogen and oxygen tanks, so a lighter lifter, in this case uh, the Vulcan Centaur rocket, can lift it with six boosters though. Uh, so yeah, that is a benefit. It can accommodate more launchers, though not aerodynamically, because its wing is bigger now. Uh, I did try to make a retractable wing, but it's not very useful. So uh, we do not have a uh, abort system configured for this yet, but that's possible. Uh, the same abort system basically that we have on the Shell Mark II could work here as well. Uh, there is no uh, cargo bay that is unpressurized. There's no unpressurized cargo bay, but there is a pressurized cargo area that we can use. So in that respect, it's sort of better than the Shell Mark II in having more space because it doesn't have to fill its area with those hydrogen and oxygen tanks. It has got those OMS tanks, but they don't take up as much space. They're about 1.5 meters in diameter compared to the hydrogen and oxygen tanks, which were 2.4. So anyway, but they, it is sort of wrapped around those and has that huge wing and it can barely be kept stable on this Vulcan rocket. So let's see how that works out for us. The Delta V isn't reading right because I have locked the Vulcan Centaur, the Centaur stage's fuel because I've underfueled it for this purpose. and. I hope I've underfueled it right this time. Previous times I had less fuel than I would have liked. And this time I put more in, but that means more burn time, which is always tricky with the Centaur stage. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition of the two core engines. And launch. Thrust weight ratio is very high. And we have to keep a very close eye on the pitch authority to make sure that this doesn't get imbalanced. In real life, this is probably not a good thing to do. So I'm just making sure that I don't use more than half of the pitch authority. But this cannot transfer itself to the moon. This is not a moon launch. This is just a low Earth orbit launch. If it wanted to go to the moon, it would have to launch on SLS, and it was intended to be a alternative to the Orion spacecraft. So it can fulfill the Orion's mission, but have the benefit of bringing back its service module. It uses fuel cells rather than solar panels. But it can't bring back its transfer stage, it would still use a Block 1B on SLS. Okay, booster set. So in that respect, it's uh, a little bit lower down on the reusability spectrum. But if it turns out that it can aero capture better than the others, that would be an obvious benefit. In all the cases, they'd be fine to return if they're not carrying any crew because then the radiation issue would not be a problem. So if they're coming back automated, they can come back automated just fine. But we would like the possibility of coming back with crew. We have underfueled the Taurus spacecraft because 
of our launch vehicle, and this is only a low Earth orbit mission. It has the capacity, and this is one reason I decided on this, was I realized that a uh, small enough spacecraft using the shuttle's OMS engines and OMS system would be able to capture around the moon and break orbit around the moon, uh, which requires at most 1,600 meters per second, but depending on if you're doing a gateway mission, if it's a lunar gateway mission, it's much less than that at the right timing. Uh, you can get by with much less. So, but I realized since the shuttle, with being rather heavy, uh, got about 400 meters per second from it, from the OMS system, then we could get enough to do the moon mission with it. So the question I suppose is, which one would you like? If you were to pick one system, which one would you prefer? The Shinkansen system, the Shuttle Mark II system, or a Taurus space plane system? Each of them has shortcomings, right? Each of them has issues and uh, things that they cannot do. If I were to pick one to release, because I haven't released I any of these uh, as a mod yet, which one would be the one that I should release? If I was just going to pick one. You can tell me your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll take them into consideration. Perhaps it would be a good thing to do for getting 20,000 subs on YouTube or something. We'll have to work on the trajectory a little bit. Uh, we've got some spares, so it could probably carry more fuel than we're carrying right now. So that's got possibilities here. Now we can uh, separate that off. And of course, the Centaur stage can deorbit itself. That's pretty standard these days. And that leaves the Taurus space plane all good. Of course, it was underfueled, but. That would be good enough to do any normal low Earth orbit mission. And again, it's a very light situation right now, 26 tons. But if you saw it next to the shuttle, you'd understand why it's 26 tons. So, uh, yep, it's got a hatch on top for ingress so that the crew can get in. But otherwise, normally they would go through the back here, uh, through the docking port. The docking, the docks on the tail. So, all right. So those are my three space plane designs. I've done other space plane designs, but those are more closely related to other things that exist in real life. These were uh, ideas based mainly about wrapping the design around fuel tanks that I had. So anyway, all these ideas, but basically designs are built around certain limitations and we try our best with that. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.